page except for FrameMaker, at least in theory. So I did want to do one more poll, and this is actually the last one we have in here, so not to worry, we're not going to make you click all day. Um, but I wanted to ask you, how are you planning to create your output? Um, creating or planning to create, and if you're not sure, um, go ahead and click other if you're not sure what the answer is going to be, if you haven't decided yet. Uh, but if you kind of think you know where you're going to go with this, then that would be interesting. All right, give you a couple more seconds on this, and I'll close it, and we'll see what we get. All right, okay, this is, oh, this is very interesting. This is actually surprising to me. So a majority for FrameMaker, an outright majority for FrameMaker, followed by some sort of help authoring conversion, followed <laughs> way behind with the Data Open Toolkit, and then a couple of people, or a 6%, a small number of people in the InDesign quirk, and a small number in the other, which is probably, we're not sure yet, or something along those lines. Was not expecting to see numbers that high for FrameMaker, and Simon, I suspect you weren't either. No, I wasn't, but... Uh, very, very interesting. Okay, I'm going to hide the results here and go back to my slides. So this is sort of the big picture. If you have, if your priority is to produce really, really pretty stuff, then you need InDesign or maybe Quark. If you want automation, if you want the ability to do nightly builds, you want the ability to kick things off on the command line and just have it run magically without any user intervention, for that you're going to need the Data Open Toolkit. FrameMaker occupies the middle ground. It gives you better typography, not the best, but better typography, and better automation, not the best. Uh, the Open Toolkit will give you the best automation. But FrameMaker does give you pretty decent kind of options in terms of, of where you end up. The other thing I want to point out at this point is a phrase that um, actually a mentor of mine used to use uh, all the time, actually. And that is lower your standards. Um, I've seen a lot of complaints about icky PDF coming out of the Data Open Toolkit, and I don't disagree in principle. I mean, it is not that attractive. But the question is, does your audience care when you don't have your ligatures and things aren't justified in a pretty way and you just don't really like the way the letting is being done? Is that something that your audience will notice? And if you have an audience of typographers or if you have a, an audience of, you know, of book snobs, then perhaps yes. But if not, you do need to keep in mind that less copy fitting equals greater op automation. And of course, greater automation equals lower cost. So there's an argument that says that probably it's time to, if for the appropriate audience, lower your standards, which I find upsetting since I started my career as a production editor, but that's kind of where we are. Now, I mentioned help authoring tools, and several of you did say that that was a direction you were looking at going in. If you need cross-browser, cross-platform help generated from DITA content, then you are probably going to need a help authoring tool such as, such as RoboHelp or Flare or ePublisher Pro, which is more of a conversion tool, to generate your help, cross-browser, cross-platform help. In, if that is the case, then it may make sense to take that tool and also configure it to output PDF. However, if you're only using a help authoring tool to generate PDF, I would argue that that is probably not the best choice. So if you have another compelling reason to use the help authoring of a conversion tool, then I would definitely take a look at that. But if you're only trying to solve the PDF problem, then I would probably go in a different direction. So I wanted to talk a little bit about PDF through the Data Open Toolkit and some of the sort of pros and cons of this and what the process looks like, and we are going to do a quick demo to look at this. First of all, and I've, I've already said this once, but I really can't say this often enough, the Data Open Toolkit, especially for PDF, is extremely difficult to configure. It is challenging. It takes a long time. It's frustrating. It's not necessarily that well documented. It's just, it's hard. It's a hard problem, and you're working 
if you're in the Open Toolkit in XSL FO, formatting objects, plus you have things like ant builds to work with. So you have a lot of different programming going on, and it's not a design kind of environment. It is a hardcore programming environment. If you are generating PDFs through the Ditto Open Toolkit, you will not get to tweak your pages. You will not get to look at something and say, oh, I don't like that page break. Let me just fix it. You do have that option in something like FrameMaker. But if you're generating through the Ditto Open Toolkit, then the generated PDF is there, and you don't have an intermediate point where you can tweak and fix. So that is a change and an issue for many of us, including me. However, I think that it's, it's safe to say that PDF through the Open Toolkit is almost certainly going to be the long-term winner in terms of what the approach is going to be, because it is automatic. The PDF isn't as good, but fewer and fewer people really care about the look and feel of, well, really anything, but in this case, about the PDF files. So I think we're going to soon get to a point where it is good enough, and that will be what people go with. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what the process looks like for using the Open Toolkit. Step one is install the Ditto Open Toolkit. Sounds like a small little step, but it turns out to be a sort of significantly challenging kind of event. You have to make sure that you have a Java runtime environment and that that's working properly. You have to install Ant, which comes with the Ditto Open Toolkit, and you know sometimes installs itself properly and sometimes not. You need an XSL processor such as Saxon or Zalin, which again comes with the install but can be troublesome. And you need an XSL FO processor, such as FOP, which is open source, and again, comes with the Ditto Open Toolkit. So all these components come with the Open Toolkit, but actually getting them up and running, working together, all the correct environment variables set, and everything working, is a task best left to a programmer type. So if you are a programmer scripting person, then you'll be OK with this. If you're not, if you don't like nasty, icky technical stuff, and if you do not enjoy the command prompt, then you are going to have some difficulty with this process. Now, there are some tools, uh, Xmetal, for example, that ship with the Ditto Open Toolkit and have put some effort behind trying to make it fairly straightforward to actually use the Open Toolkit out of the box. That makes it a little bit easier, but again, once you get in there and you start customizing, life gets a little more difficult. So step one, install the Ditto Open Toolkit. Step two, modify the XSL FO files that are part of the toolkit to get the output that you want. Uh, that can actually be significantly difficult. You can spend a lot of time trying to figure out the interactions and the overlap and the complexities of the files. And then once you have that working, you can then generate PDFs from the command line. So. Some of the ch and I will show you a demo of this in a second. Some of the challenges that you're going to run into with the Ditto Open Toolkit are these fonts. You can't just sort of say, oh, use this font, or pick from a drop-down list to choose the font. You're going to have to learn the official font name. You're going to have to type that font name in. If you're working in FOP, you potentially have to register the font with FOP, which is a real pain. So actually, Getting the Open Toolkit to recognize something other than your basic Arial Helvetica Times New Roman, hard. Formatting. Once you get in there and you start making formatting changes, you're going to find yourself working in a text editor. And it's really not that much fun to type in formatting in a text editor in a sort of CSS-like language. FO itself, the process of creating